morning, full and tender with a thousand stories about and memories of Thad Cochran. We thank you, O oh God, for all the ways Senator Cochran made the rest of us want to be better just by being exactly who he was. And we pray that his clear moral compass, gentle spirit, and wide welcome of all people will so challenge and inspire us that his death will prove to be less the ending of an era than the passing of a torch. We pray, O oh God, your comfort and strength for Thad's family and friends as we rest him now and always in your strong and healing hands, content to know that Thad Cochran is with you and you are with us. Amen. Thad Cochran inspired so many of us. He served, as you know, quite a while in the United States Congress and as United States Senator. So there were many of us that grew up recognizing what true leadership really meant. Many of us grew up inspired to aspire someday to be like Thad Cochran. Not Thad Cochran, but just simply perhaps like Thad Cochran, a quiet leader. The young man I'm about to introduce now is one of those, I believe, that has received the torch that has been passed from this great senator. He now serves as lieutenant governor for the state of Mississippi. He's a former state treasurer. May I introduce the Honorable Tate Reeves. United States Senator Thad Cochran served in the United States Congress, in the United States Senate, the people of Mississippi for many years. But I can think, think of no more appropriate place for him to be this morning than in this building that was built in the early 1900s, first moved in in 1903, as truly the people of Mississippi's capital. Because while Senator Cochran served in a Capitol building far away, he always represented his constituents and his people. As I look around this rotunda, full of people who loved this man, it tells me, and I know it tells you so much about who Thad Cochran was. The great Mississippi writer Shelby Foote said, quote, it's not enough to know what you're against. And I know we all can agree that Senator Cochran never settled for merely knowing what he was against. He always knew what he was for. He was an icon of a better era and a role model for anyone and everyone who serves. He loved this state because he loved the people in this state. Black and white, rich and poor, Republican or Democrat. He fought every single day for Mississippi. Thad Cochran was a gentle man, but he was also a strong man. He had the quiet strength that comes with purpose. He knew what his purpose was every day. It wasn't glory, it wasn't power. 
It was simply to work for Mississippi families. And he would and he did move mountains for those families. He protected our military institutions and he stood with Mississippi farmers in times of need. If you came to this man with a problem, he'd run through every barrier to find a solution. And of course, his leadership was perhaps most visible when Hurricane Katrina hit our state. At that time, I was new to politics, just in my second year as state treasurer, simply trying to make sure our state paid the bills on time during that disaster, trying to protect our credit rating and those of our cities and counties. I had the honor and the duty of working alongside Senator Cochran. They say that it's in times of crisis that you find out the mettle of a man. Senator Cochran never panicked. He never lost control. He was sure. He was steady. He was certain. He was a port during that storm. And he had what was his most valuable asset. He had the credibility that he had built over four decades. Credibility built by keeping his word to friends and foes alike, day in and day out, year in and year out. He put all of that credibility on the line for Mississippi. Without, without his work in that dangerous time, I don't know what our state would look like today. We live in an age when politicians are built up and torn down with equal haste. That never really applied to Senator Cochran. That Cochran loved this state and everyone in it. He had friends in every town, people who would flock to hear his stories of the good old days in the Senate or share stories of their own struggles and needs because they always knew that he would always listen. I had the opportunity to see that firsthand during his last ride on the campaign trail in 2014. I had the opportunity to stand beside him in small towns talking with Mississippians. We didn't know it at the time, but it was a fitting farewell from a giant of our state to the people of Mississippi, the people that Thad Cochran loved. And one thing was crystal clear from all those visits. The people of Mississippi loved him back. Thad Cochran lived a good and noble life. He will be sorely missed, but he will always be remembered. In this building, the House of Representatives is often called the People's Chamber, and right, rightfully so, 122 members that represent Mississippians all across this wonderful state. It was all right and proper that we recognize today the Speaker of the House, Philip Gunn, for comments in the passing of Senator Thad Cochran. Speaker Gunn. Thank you, Governor, and good morning. First, I want to thank the family for allowing me to participate in this ceremony. Dad Cochran is arguably the most celebrated public servant in the history of our state. So it's a tremendous honor for me to be able to participate in this ceremony here today. And I want the family to know that uh, we grieve with you. There are people in this room who have been where you are who understand the pain of loss, who understand the absence of loved ones. 
and uh, our hearts go out to you. And we are here with you. We grieve with you. We pray for you. We pray that the Lord give you comfort. As I was thinking about my remarks here today, I asked myself the question, what is it about Thad Cochran that causes us to celebrate his life in such a grand fashion? What causes us to honor him like this? And like many of you, my mind immediately went to his accomplishments, which are legion and are many, and you're going to hear a lot about that both today and in the days to come. He served our country in the United States Navy. He's got over 45 years of service in Congress, making him the second longest member of Congress in Mississippi history. He's the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, United States Senate, arguably the most powerful position in the country. One of the longest serving U.S. Senators. His list of legislative accomplishments in Congress are far too numerous to name here today. In 2006, he was named one of the 10 best Senators in the country. He's helped many people of this state over the last 45 years. He's earned the trust of the people of this state, and that is reflected by the fact that they voted for him 10 times to send him to Congress to represent the people of this state. And I could go on and on with his list of accomplishments, but that would seem incomplete to me. To me, that is not the whole story. His life could be celebrated just for those accomplishments alone. So why do we set aside a time like this to honor him? Why do we call him great? Why do we call him a statesman? Why or what sets him apart from all the other politicians that we know? And the answer to me is it's because he loved this state. He loved the people of this state. He devoted his life to us. He gave his life in service to make Mississippi a better place. And he left Mississippi better than he found it. Most of all, he set an example for all of us to follow, not just the politicians, but all of us. He remembered that he was there to serve, not be served. He put others ahead of himself. He tried to be a friend to all, regardless of race or gender or political affiliation. And he did all of this with grace and character and dignity and honor and class. And so it was the way he lived his life that sets him apart. It's the way he lived his life that deserves our honor and recognition here today. Thad Cochran was indeed a great man, and he accomplished much in his lifetime. But more than that, he was a friend to us all, and our lives are better because of him. So if someone asks me, why do we honor Thad Cochran here today in such a grand fashion, my answer is it's not about what he did. It's about who he was as a man. Many years ago, as we would seek speakers for Republican events, there was a district elected official that we would call on time and time again, the brother of the great Thad Cochran, and great in his own right, Nielsen Cochran. Nielsen, it's so wonderful to see you and kind of here today. God bless you for your life and what you've done, and we pray for you today during this time of challenge and struggle. There's so much that could be said, so much that we all want to make sure that we express. So I will borrow a few words from Henry Cabot Lodge today and his tribute of President Theodore Roosevelt upon the President's passing, or the Colonel, as he liked to be called, in that February 9th, 1919 ceremony. Senator Henry Cabot Lodge said, we cannot approach Theodore Roosevelt's death along the beaten path of eulogy 
or satisfy ourselves with the empty civilities of commonplace funeral tributes. For he did not make his life's journey over main traveled roads, nor was he ever commonplace. Words of Theod to Theodore Roosevelt and of him that day certainly can be applied to the great Thad Cochran. Robert Frost, Frost once wrote that two roads diverge in the woods and I, I took the one less traveled by and it has made all the difference. In 1972, Thad Cochran took the road less traveled by. You see, in those days there were often political candidates that seemed to polarize Mississippi, one group pitted against the other. And along came this young man from Pontotoc, Mississippi, that changed the entire political dynamic. No longer was it simply white or, or black, a or region against another region, or Democrats against this new party of Republicans that was growing so strong in the 1970s. Sad Cochran was a candidate for every man and every woman, and every race, and every gender, and every population within his beloved Mississippi. Born at December 7th of 1937 in Pontotoc to William and Emma Cochran. 1946, they moved to Byram. I always knew that Cochran from Byram, Mississippi. He was an Eagle Scout at the Spring Ridge Methodist Church. When I first began years ago to read about Thad, and that's all we had to remember. He was one of those few public figures that only needed one name. When you said Thad, everyone, Thad, knew who you were talking about. And everyone knew him. Everyone was his close friend, whether they were or not, they wanted to be. And Thad wanted to make them feel as such. But I remember thinking, as I first read this story years ago, of, of Thad Cochran, the all-American boy. So you're born in Mississippi in the 1930s, moved to a little hamlet called Byron, Mississippi, and become an Eagle Scout. You earn varsity letters in football and baseball and basketball and tennis. I would have just given anything to have one of those in a varsity letter. Not that. All of the sports. Then he gave a voice and piano recital as a senior at Byron High School. It wasn't enough that he was one of the top athletes. He also sang and gave a piano recital. I would say that was a unique experience for the Byram High School class. Then he worked as a car hop at Gunn's Dairy Bar and clerked at Nicholson's Grocery. I'm reminded of a movie, favorite movie of mine. It's called A Wonderful Life. Many of you may remember it. We used to have the opportunity to watch it about every Christmas. I made my children watch it. They really resisted when they got in their 20s. It's about a fictional character named George Bailey. And George had had some challenges. Life had been tough. It seemed as if to George it after those challenges, life would be over, but the Lord intervened, called upon all those that had been touched by George Bailey's life. It happened to be everyone in the town. People who had their homes and who had had, had their savings, people whose children's lives were affected in such a positive way, jobs that were afforded to people there in the community because of George Bailey's selfless work and dedication. George never asked for anything for himself. 
He gave and gave and gave. He had a wonderful life. In fact, at that Christmas Eve, as his friends gathered around him to lift him up, they said, George Bailey, the richest man in town. He was rich in friendship and love and the devotion of those that knew him so well. Dad Cockman, the all-American boy, went on to serve his country in the United States Navy. And it wasn't just enough that he would start at the great University of Mississippi and go on to finish law school there. He was president of his fraternity, student body vice president, company commander of the Navy ROTC. I think I saw a pattern beginning to form. This all-American boy became the all-American leader. Summers, he worked as a lifeguard. And if we knew the truth, he could probably tell you those that he saved from a watery grave. Became a distinguished attorney. And in 1972, as I mentioned earlier, was elected to the United States Congress as a Republican. An unheard of thing in 1972, almost unheard of. But Dad did unheard of things, things were, that were unusual but so beneficial. You see, he won re-election as a Republican in 1974-1976 with 70 percent of the vote. We call that a landslide. He was humble in his victory, always. I remember that election in 1978. Deborah and I had been married a couple of years and we were pulling for and working so hard for Thad Cochran to be United States Senate, the first Republican elected in over 100 years, and he was. But again, he was elected with the support of all Mississippians. He realized that you had to not divide but bring people together. He changed that dynamic. And I believe not being partisan today, I think that is the dynamic that we should take from this place forward, that we should remember forever of his life, the honor, the dignity, the humility. That will be the legacy of this great man. Reelected six times to the United States Senate. We know of Mr. Chairman of Agriculture and Appropriations. But when I would visit, when any of us would visit to Thad Cochran's office, it was a quiet time of friendship. You normally would begin by thanking the senator and, and expressing your concern about taking up his time because you knew how busy he was. My goodness, he was a appropriations chairman of the United States Senate. No, 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 he would say. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me what I can do for you. This was the amazing Thad Cochran that stood for Mississippi and, and the entire affected area of Katrina, bringing hope and opportunity to people who had nothing, whose homes had been destroyed, who, which everything they had had been taken away. And there was Thad Cochran and others standing with him as he led in restoration of his beloved Mississippi. He served with nine presidents. Recently, President Trump said he was a real senator. Simple but profound from our president, he was a real senator with incredible values. That, said the president, never let our country down. I remember the great times with Thad Cochran, how fortunate I felt each time I was in his presence. As I've introduced him on a number of occasions, I would always say, one day my grandchildren will ask me, did you really know Thad Cochran? Did you really meet him? Yes, I did. 
and I really knew Dad Cochran. And it has been one of the great joys of my life. In 1997, I was running as state auditor. I asked the great Thad Cochran to come to a fundraiser. We all understand how important that is. It was Huntington's Grill that Saturday afternoon, and the United States Senator agreed to do so. He drove up in front of the restaurant that night by himself. We're waiting outside. We, we were anxious and anticipating his arrival, and there he was, unannounced. In fact, we almost missed him. He parked on the side of the building, kind of walked up behind us and surprised us. We thought, where's the security? Where, where's the team? Where are all those people that usually circle around the United States senators, the staff members? It was sad. He was there to campaign for a young state auditor who would be ever affected by simply knowing and experiencing Thad Cochran. As the Lieutenant Governor mentioned earlier, we were so happy to be on that bus in 2014, there with that happy warrior, Thad Cochran, out campaigning. Now, I, I can be a, a little aggressive sometimes during campaigning. Just I get anxious about that. We want to do our very best. And, Dad was the calming effect that he always is, smiling, happy to see everyone, thanking them for being there to welcome him in small groups and large. Okay, and Nilsen, Thad, Catherine, and all the family. We hope that in some small way we have honored the legacy in the memory of Thad Cochran today. If we gathered each year at this appointed place at this time, we could do so again and again. Perhaps that's not a bad idea. To honor such a life is more than one afternoon or one, more than one eulogy or one ceremony. But as I sat in my chair just a few moments ago, a light came through the window and shone directly on me. And I could hear Thad saying, don't take too long. He never did. David, the great psalmist, wrote he delights in the law of the Lord. He is like a tree planted by a stream which yields its fruit in seasons and whose leaves never wither. Whatever he does prospers. From a young boy in Pontotoc County to the all-American boy to Mississippi Senator, Dad Cochran was that mighty free by the stream. And Mississippi has always prospered because he was here. Farewell this noble and gentle servant of the people. Please rise for the posting of the Mississippi Highway Patrol Honor Guard. <coughs>
This concludes the service for today for Senator Thad Cochran. At this time, his family is going to come forward and begin receiving guests, starting with our state and federal dignitaries.